Dear friends, welcome back to Data Analytics Talks. Hope you are doing great today. You know, one of the most important things in the fast changing area of business intelligence BI is to know how to work and use data well. And that's what most of us like today. We don't know how to work and use our data. You know, out of the numerous technologies built to implement data warehousing and analytics, you know, data world is one of them that occupies great position. So it's a precise way of designing and developing data warehouse architecture in any enterprise that gives flexibility, scalability, and availability. And this session is all about data world. And this is a basic session. If you are a beginner, if you would like to understand more about data world, let's start from here. Let's begin. So welcome back. We will start with looking at the definition of data world. So what is a data world? A data world is a data modeling design pattern used to build data warehouse for enterprise scale analytics. So there are three key points. One is, it is a data modeling design pattern used to build data warehouses for enterprise scale analytics. So along with that, let's also understand there are three elements, three core pillars of data world. They are hubs, links, and satellite. So let's look into that. So coming to data world modeling, you know, there are three elements. Hub, the unique business case, then link, the relationship and association, and satellite. They are the descriptive data. So look at this diagram. You see customers, products, and orders. And you have, there is some connectors between customer products and orders. And also you see some satellites. The satellites is the descriptive data. Maybe little this little more explanation about each of them. So let's look what is a hub. These are used to store unique business keys. Each hub represents a core business concept. And they represent customer ID, product number, vehicle identification as the key. So what happens? The users will use business keys to get information about hub. For example, in order to get information about the customer, they will use customer ID. In order to get details about the products, they will use product ID. In order to get details about the orders, they will use maybe the vehicle number, right? So the business key may have a combination of business concept ID and sequence ID, load date, and other metadata information. I hope you understand about the hub. Now, links. The links represent the relationship between the hub entities, the relation between the customer and the product, relation between the product and the orders. Right. So the connect hub band represents relationship between them. That is called links. And finally, the satellite. You know, the most important thing about data world is it is able to track the history, historical data. So the Satellites store historical data and descriptive attributes related to hubs and links. The satellites fill the gap in answering the missing descriptive information on core business concept. So in order to maintain the historical tracking, the satellites take care of the historical information about the hub. Then, what are the benefits of data world? You know, there are many design patterns, but data world, what are the benefits of them? First of all, it is built on agile technology. We all know that agile technology give you a lot of flexibility. The data world are based on agile methodologies and techniques, which means they can adapt to fast-paced changing business requirements. You know, you can align your, 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 your development or modeling to the changes of the business, right? And you know, one of the major advantage of using data world methodology is that the ETL jobs, which is the 
core of your data integration needs very less refactoring when the model changes. Then second one is it is structured with flexibility for refactoring. Then it is extremely scalable up to many petabytes volumes. Then use patterns that support ETL code generation. Finally, familiar architecture and data layers, ETL, star schemas. Then very important to note at this point, the different versions of data world, you know, there are two major versions of data world, 1.0 and 2.0. You know, 2.0 is an extension to 1.0. So let's understand the highlights of 1.2. So the 1.2 has historical data tracking, then auditability and flexibility. So if you look at the diagram, you can see data sources, various data sources. Then the whole thing comes under the data world where we have the staging, then the row world, the core data store, then the business world and information marts. And from there we consume data science and business intelligence and services. So the question is, in data world 1.2, what has been achieved because of so and so features? Historical data tracking, auditability and flexibility, right? So with data world 1.2, the foundations of a flexible, scalable data warehouse were laid that could handle the intricacies of today's enterprise data landscape. It proposed a model that consisted of hub, link, and satellite with accountability and tracking of historical data as key features and integration of distinct systems. So to ensure data warehouse could evolve without significant rework, meeting changes in business needs and processes was the first call. So historical tracking means it captures the full history of data changes, enabling deep historical analysis. What's auditability? Every piece of data can be tracked back to its sources, enhancing data governance and compliance. And flexibility means the modular design allows for easy integration of new data sources and adaptation of business changes. So that was all about Data World 1.2. Then coming to Data World 2.0, you know, this was, this has tried to address many drawbacks of 1.0. More performance optimization, hash keys, business world, real-time data processing, big data, and NoSQL support. So building upon the strength of Data World 1.0, Data World 2.0 was introduced to address the emerging challenges in the data management particularly around big data and real-time analytics. If I compare one and two from different perspective on core components in 1.0, it is hub, links, and satellite. 2.0, hub, links, satellite with the addition of hash keys and business world. On the base of performance, it is only 1.0 supporting the standard optimization. 2.0 advanced optimization techniques for big data. Then data processing 1.0 supported batch oriented. Then 2.0 supports both batch and real time processing. From a technology compatibility, 1.0 support traditional RDBMS. 2.0 support expanded to include big data and NoSQL technologies. Then data governance, no. 1.0 supported a strong auditability and historical tracking, but coming to 2.0 enhanced with hash keys for better integrity and consistency. This was a basic understanding about data world, and I am sure you have some takeaways. You understood what is data world. It is nothing but a data modeling design pattern. And again, we said that the major three elements of data world are hub, satellite, and links. And there are two versions, 1.0 and 2.0. 2.0 is built on 1.0 with additional 
features which supported big data, stream analytics, real-time analytics, and NoSQL. We will have a detailed section on how to implement data world in the future. Thank you very much for watching this video.